Hey guys, welcome to Brew Espresso Coffee. Today's topic is how to make cold brew coffee at home with a disposable filter bag. You've probably already seen various methods of making cold brew coffee at home and you might have tried one or two of them. And your verdict was probably like, nah, I'll just stick to buying cold brew from Starbucks. Yes, most cold brew preparation methods are quite messy. They involve a lot of vessels to wash and maintain, and the filtration is just a mess. However, there is a convenient, not messy way of making cold brew at home, and I'm going to be showing it to you today. The easiest, cheapest method of making cold brew at home is to just use a jar and a disposable filter bag, not the coffee sock. I hate the coffee sock. Messy, unsanitary, and honestly, inconvenient overall. We're gonna use a disposable filter bag and it's actually super similar to tea bags, but it's just much larger. No need to wash a filter or a strainer. You can simply dispose of the bag right after you use it. You don't need extra space for the equipment. No need to make space in your fridge for bulky coffee makers. And it's very low tech. And also the cleaning process is so much easier than the other methods of making cold brew. Now, before we get to the recipe, here's a little geeky fact. Specialists call this method immersion cold brew. This is because the coffee grounds are immersed in water and they're steeped for a long time. Toddy, Filtrin, and Hario are all immersion cold brew coffee makers, as is the brew filter bag. So why is this important? Because there are many ways of preparing cold brew and they all produce a different coffee with a unique flavor of their own. The cold brew that you buy at your local coffee shop is most likely immersion cold brew as well. Now let's get to the preparation method. The recipes for cold brew can vary quite a lot depending on your taste and your preferences and your objectives. The best approach of making cold brew is to make it very concentrated and then after that dilute it with water. So the recipe that we're going to be using today is just that. People actually like to call that cold brew espresso. So to start off, make sure that you have everything you need from this short list. Medium coarse ground coffee, a mason jar or another glass vessel, a disposable coffee bag, and also cold water. So the filter bag that I recommend are paper drawstring or non-woven fabric which are both disposable and easy to use. I actually posted a link below if you want to take a look and see if you want to use the one that I'm using. Now, I know everyone's teaching you to use ground coffee that's coarse, but if you're worried about that, I'm going to be posting another video soon that's going to explain why a finer grind size is actually better for a cold brew coffee. Now, you want to start by measuring your coffee. And you want your ratio of grounds to water to be somewhere between 1 to 5 and 1 to 9. So you can brew more at once if you do a 1 to 5 ratio. However, you're going to have to dilute it more if you use that recipe. So you're going to need to have 1 cup of beans that you'll grind to a medium coarse and 5 cups of filtered water or spring water. So to start off, you want to grind your coffee beans. As I said, you need a medium coarse grind. Look at how beautiful these look. Transfer your grounds into the filter bags. You're likely going to need two of them for the amount of coffee we're using. Fill it up as much as you can and then tightly close it with the drawstring. I 
like to close it like this. And getting my second bag now. And then close it the same way. Now get your jar. Now put your coffee bags in the mason jar. You need one that's large enough to hold the coffee bags and five cups of water. Pour the water over the coffee bags. If you need to, move the bags around inside the jar to make sure all the grounds are fully saturated with water. Screw the lid onto your jar or cover your jar with some plastic wrap if you don't have a lid. Put your jar in the fridge. Let it steep for 24 to 72 hours. It's a little bit better to wait 48 to 72 hours because you're going to get more flavor in your coffee. However, if you don't have the time to steep your coffee for very long and you're in a hurry, 24 hours is just enough. Your brew is just going to be weaker and this means you're going to add less water to the brew. Hey guys, so it's been 48 hours that I've been steeping my coffee. And now I'm gonna be taking out the bags and I'll just discard them. I'll put them on a plate to save some time. Now you can use a spoon if you don't wanna put your hand in your jar. Squeezing a little bit of the coffee out so I don't waste it, but you don't need to do this. So now I'm going to mention the fact that the starting point for the dilution should be one to one, but this is the starting point, so you might find it too strong or you might find it perfect, but use at least uh, the same amount of water that you use coffee. And then if you still find it too strong, then add more water or more milk. So I already have an idea that I'm going to like it to be a little bit more diluted because I like my coffee to not be super strong. So I'm going to purposely leave some extra space. Let's test it though. Mm. This is actually really delicious. Um, it's not too strong, it's perfect actually. One to one is really good. And I really like to have my coffee with some milk, so I'm gonna add a splash of milk. I'm not gonna add too much because this already tastes really good. So I don't wanna overpower the taste with milk. 
Look at how beautiful the color is. Mm. It's so good. So actually, you know what's really good about this? Um, like you might think that it's gonna take you a really long time to prepare the cold brew, but it's actually gonna save you time in the long run because if you spend a few minutes making your cold brew and you make a bunch of batches um, it's actually gonna save you time because you're not gonna have to wake up earlier to make your coffee in the morning so your coffee is actually gonna be ready when you wake up um, you just need to add your milk or if you like to drink it as it is then it's already ready oh yeah um, I also wanted to show you guys my older batch so this one I actually started steeping before starting the video. It actually steeped for 72 hours, so it's stronger. And basically it has a little bit more flavor than this one, but they're both really good. If you dilute it well enough, it's equally delicious. So good. Alright, so that's it for the tasting of this. Now that you've seen me make a cold brew, here are a few more tips to make it perfect. For a cleaner coffee, let your brew settle in a glass bottle for about half a day, then carefully transfer it in a glass bottle. Make sure you do not disturb the sludge at the bottom of the bottle. For a stronger cup, you can mix the sludge in. It's gonna have a much stronger taste, however. This is reserved for those who don't mind a little bit of mud in their cup. If you want to extract the most out of your coffee beans and obtain the bolder flavors, then let your cold brew steep for 72 hours. That's three days. You'll want to make sure that you dilute it properly before you drink it, however. Now for the best brew balance, you do want to leave that muddy stuff in the brew if you don't drink it immediately. This is going to extract more of the good stuff in the coffee and it's going to give it a really special flavor. You can leave that sediment in the coffee brew for days. Now, don't steep the grounds for more than 72 hours because that's going to be too much. If you steep it for too long, then you're going to get some unwanted flavors and your coffee is not going to be as delicious anymore. Now, if you let the muddy stuff from the bottom of your jar steep longer, that's going to give you such a delicious flavor that you actually do want to get in there. To conclude, using a disposable filter bag is just super easy and it's very convenient and a clean way of making cold brew. Now, if you're a huge coffee or espresso lover, please subscribe to our channel because we're going to be posting more and more videos. And if you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much again and see you next time. Bye!